Good morning, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to walk you through one of the cases of infiltrative cardiomyopathies. It's a young male around 40 years old presented with um, severe shortness of breath, uh, severe hypotension, um, no previous history of cardiac diseases, no family history of inherited or cardiac um, diseases. Um, was referred for the um, ACS. Coronary artery on the CT was cleared, so there was no coronary artery disease. The patient was referred for MRI for further investigations. As you may see, um, on the two chamber view, we could see this is the left atrium, left ventricle, and we could see the poor systolic function, poor longitudinal function. Also, we may see the uh, moderate right pleural effusion, minimal pericardial effusion, some or mild ascites as well. Uh, the same is confirmed on the uh, four chamber views, right atrium, left atrium, left ventricle, right ventricle, poor systolic function, radial and longitudinal function, moderate pleural effusion on the right side, and minimal left pleural effusion, denoting that there is a decompensated uh, heart failure. On a short axis view, we could see poor systolic, radial systolic function, and we could see that the kinesia of the myocardium is global, severely hypokinetic, and there was no regional wall motion abnormality, which confirms again that there is no territorial coronary artery uh, disease. There was no excessive trabeculation. Myocardium was not thickened, so there was no uh, significant hypertrophy, whether on the right side or on the left side. Again, the poor systolic function and the LVOT was unobstructed. Uh, on the stair images, because this was performed as a myocarditis protocol in order to exclude any um, inflammatory disease, we could see that there was no uh, evidence of myocardial edema. That's a stair images, fat suppression in order to see any edema. And as you may see, the effusion, the fat is being suppressed and no myocardial edema. Two chamber view short axis view again confirms that there is no definite myocardial edema which exclude um, inflammatory cardiac process but if I go back as you may see the difference in the signal between the liver and the spleen so the liver is being dark while the spleen is being bright If we move to, that's a short uh, three chamber view. Again, uh, we could see unobstructed left ventricular outflow tract, poor systolic function. Um, that's um, again T2 fat suppression, no myocardial edema, coronal view of the outflow tract. And on the haste images, we may see the difference in the signal between the liver and um, the spleen and again the spleen was enlarged the liver was mildly enlarged um, on the maps the, the T2 maps again confirming no myocardial edema. Four chamber view, I prefer to measure the T1 and T2 maps on short axis view rather than the four chamber views because sometimes the four chamber planning goes through the inferior insertion points which sometimes mid lead to miss uh, interpretations. And if we go on the T1 map, um, we could see that there is a deviation of 
the T1 map, normal T1 map on 1.5 Tesla should be uh, between the 950, 1050 milliseconds. As you may see here, it's 785. That's the native T1 value, which indicates that there is a decrease of the extracellular uh, volume due to probably deposition of intracellular abnormal material confirming with the signals from the liver and spleen this indicates that the intracellular deposition is an iron overload and this is the t2 star which the sequence that we use in order to measure the decay signal in the heart and in the liver in different eight echoes um, and then a map is being created at the end and gives the values previously there was those tables that would tell you the numbers and the volume or the iron overload of whether there is an iron overload and if yes the degree mild moderate or severe and in the measurement we could see here that the decay of the liver is already the, dec the signal is decayed very early at the two uh, the TE here, the time of echo was 2 milliseconds, so the decay of the liver was very rapid, which means that there is excessive iron overload. Uh, maybe the heart took a while, but again the decay was also quick, and the signal indicated on the map um, indicated again, or confirmed again, the severe iron overload, which should be above the 20 uh, but as you may see here, it's around 8.9. The patient was um, confirmed to have iron overload by the labs and sent for genetic testing because of the name and nationality indicated maybe Mediterranean Sea where some of the anemias and iron overload is very common. And because of the deposition of the iron overload, it was severe intercellular which is on the expense of the excess air volume as we saw in the T1 map that there is decrease of excess air volume so there is no space for the gadolinium um, to spread during the late gadolinium enhancement so the gadolinium enhancement is not the perfect images um, but probably this is due to the intracellular deposition of iron which led to decrease of the extracellular space so there was no diffu or there was no diffusion of sufficient gadolinium to get good quality uh, images but again there was no a certain pattern of myocarditis for example or um, a certain specific cardiomyopathy and you could see again the enlarged spleen so this case was confirmed by MRI as severe hepatic and myocardial iron overload thank you